So drawing spaceships, designing worlds, creating sci-fi environments, whether they're post-apocalyptic or other, it's a lot of fun. And a lot of art students uh, do that. However, it's also kind of prohibiting to developing your, your design skills and, and to growing. A lot of the time, you're, you're not putting the restrictions in place to really get a lot out of the design process. You're going to hinder how you develop your, your eye for design, your analytical skills, as well as your problem solving ones. I see this all the time amongst my students. So in this big mega video, we're going to get into all that. I'm going to show you how my team and I break down developing environments for films and games. And this one in this video is cyberpunk. It's a great genre. It's one of my favorites and it's, you know, it's kind of popular and we're going to use numerous examples, uh, different approaches in some instances and show a, a variety of those, uh, you know, that we use on the day to day. So while this is not the be all end all and the only way of doing this, it will kind of give you a good insight on how to do that. So I'm Tyler and let's get going. All right guys, so phase one is to plan our image out. This is the biggest step that most students skip. It is the biggest step that a lot of people overlook or try to rush through, but it is very important as it can really dictate how the rest of the process will play through. So let's say, uh, you know, for our example here today, we're gonna do some cyberpunk interior designs. So right, we're gonna start with room design and pardon my handwriting, I'm not gonna take time here to, to really clean this up. Hopefully it'll be somewhat legible. And what I like to do is to really on, on this step one is to figure out what my idea is. Now this can come in a few different forms, mind mapping it out, listing, you know, basically categorizing and organizing is a fantastic way to get some of the ideas out of our head and of course onto some kind of paper or visual uh, uh, visualization, right? So if we're gonna do for like a typical kind of apartment and loft, for example, right? Like that can go a number of different ways. It can be old, right? It can be new. It can be really um, run down. It can be maintained. It can be, you know, pristine and really fancy, right? Like if it's it's upper class, or it can be low class or low tier. Very. Um, kind of grungy like right like that would dictate a lot of how these kind of go and again this is just this could apply to a number of different this is just like idea one right we could do as well like a rich or like let's say a an exec an executive's office And that can have a number of different things in it. And that would be like the next step. Okay, what do I need for these particular areas? What are gonna be a part of them? So like on the apartment and loft, for example, you know, we could have very typical things like, like bed area, um, bath area, uh, kitchen, rec, you know, recreational space. These are all different spaces that would come with this. If we're doing more of like a bigger executive's office or like a lounge, in an executive's office, right? What are what are things we could have in there? And I'll have examples of both these as we go forward, right? We could do like a mini bar, which would be great. Um, a, a meeting table. Could do a lounge. Could do a number of different things. We could have some sort of uh, focal element as well. Some kind of unique art piece you know in, in a nicer building you'd have that and play into that cyberpunk genre which would be absolutely fantastic so right this is how i start to kind of come up with plans and of course they can look like a number of different things depending on how you want to to go about it we could at this point list other aesthetics that we want to make sure we include so for example if we're doing kind of like a conventional tokyo type of cyberpunk we could lean into modern kind of like Japanese architectural aesthetics. Or if we want to go 
in a completely different hemisphere of the world and, and kind of make our own little subgenre of what uh, the cyberpunk architecture could uh, include, that could be very different. That could spice it up. But that's just another way of, of kind of going about it. So right here's our, our kind of plan. And again, setting up our own expectations and managing those throughout is a huge part of this. So right now we could kind of make a decision too as like as to what kind of art I want to do or what what do I want to solve and overall resolve. I, I want to basically, with this, I think the, the core kind of key goal could be a number of things, right? We could figure out what the layout design is of this space. Does it functionally kind of work? Or, you know, a very other kind of common path, you know, as we'll touch upon is doing more of like a cinem, you know, like a cinematic sort of key art for that, you know, where it's in perspective, in camera, we use atmospheric lighting, right? Different approaches, different tasks. But I mean, there's a lot of overlap and we're going to get into that kind of coming up as to how we can solve some of these uh, processes coming down into phase two. So the big tip here, of course, is to plan, try to figure out what we want to go for in terms of aesthetics. And that could look like these two examples, either or, right? That I brought up, you know, that I did on the Patreon back in December. So full videos over there, of course. But like, see this the top shot is more about, it's in camera, we're selling vibes, right? We're, we're portraying mood. We're really getting into the grime and, and how cluttered things could potentially be. The second one equally as valid, but it has different goals. Uh, and it conventionally, like I, I, you know, in the past I have solved these differently, but now, of course, now a more uh, modern kind of context way of, of coming to this solution is a little more flexible. It's a little more modular and, and that's just using a lot of 3D and that's using a handful of pre-made assets when necessary as well. This is what done, you know, for, for, for demo, you know, for various students uh, start to finish. But as you could see, this one here is less about that exact uh, lighting and it gives us we're kind of panned out it's like a cutaway right we rip the hole in the building this is great by the way for um like student portfolios that want to get into design show your understanding of how something could be potentially built and and laid out and a huge part uh, of this phase is not you know essentially going to going too far with that so like again i could I could get into other apartments or, or the outside over here, but it's not about that. I'm keeping the focus on this interior space. And, and so therefore I'm not going, you know, it, I'm not putting extra effort in that could waste time in other areas that aren't important to the layout. I just want to choose an angle, which this is again, a, another, another huge question that comes up every term with a lot of students. How do I know, you know, that my angle is right? How do I know I'm choosing the best angle for the picture? Well, again, it's going to be based off those two choices. Am I going with something cinematic in shot? Well, simply you could just, you want to choose an angle that shows as much information as, as you can, unless there's some kind of added narrative that you can really, um, you want to focus in on something specific. But as a, as a general rule of thumb, what is showing a lot of information and and honestly the same thing kind of can go with this version as well like you know, i like a typical overhead three quarter view because it, it it's a an optimized way of showing so if i had rotated the camera over here we wouldn't be able to see this whole right wall or this whole left wall so essentially we're gonna we have to compromise right on information and, and on the visual side of things so you know i it, take my medicine, I'm going to have to remove one wall either way. And, and I'd rather remove just one wall over two. And I remove this bigger wall in the end, uh, just because I can, we're looking at it like it's a shadow box. Now, if you, if you look at some of these other, let me just bring them up here, examples of alternative camera shots that I have for like a more cinematic layout, uh, you'll see that like, though different, are they better or worse? Well, it's just a matter of, of preference, really. But it's also like, you know, what am I really trying to show? So see, like, this is cool. We're like, we got this behind the counter 
sort of angle which shows a little bit more here and there and there but at the same time we're losing a lot of that other wall and we really don't get to see much of that kitchen you know behind us you know same with this piece again it's similar but we lose this whole wall we lose the arcade but we kind of look at this this corner and this nice shelving area so right there's always a compromise and uh, you know we're going to add something but we got to take it away so i try to find the path with with an angled decision of least resistance to basically i could pack as much information that's relevant to the design problem as possible all right so moving forward into our uh, design planning and uh, phases here at this point moving firmly kind of like into phase two knowing exactly what we want to do we want to do we're going to show a couple different examples here. We're going to go with an, an exec sort of area, which is up, upper class, and we'll go with like that lower one that I just had brought up on screen, which is more of like a grungy, typical cyberpunk apartment. So what would my reference look like, you know, for this apartment scene? It, it's going to look just like this. And I'm going to, yeah, often enough, I'll just kind of keep extending the sheet and, and, and grab my favorite, essentially my favorite examples, and almost like bringing them right on right onto it right so if this is all which we'll write here in red right this is all phase one you know phase two will begin over here and that if we're for planning right that's the this is where i like to go into research and additional kind of problem solving that may you know or may not come up in the design and being of course uh, flexible enough uh, to use those but essentially the big tip here you know is use reference and use it wisely use it to set up a nice good firm base you know for your idea and and that's exactly what i did so my, my reference this is kind of what it looked like and let me break down a lot of why i chose these particular things again if we're going for like a loft that's a little more rustic because it's got like a lot of these materials in it. I chose this particular reference that basically sums up how I feel about loft areas, right? It's very industrial, lots of exposed pipes, um, little wires. We could see a lot of that, which is cool. And, you know, but I didn't see enough of that. So I was like, okay, let me grab a particular reference of like a subway interior. And that's where this came in. So again, I could see how um, the, the pipes are fitted. I could see how the wires interact and do they go around the pipes? How dense do those get at places? How do they conform, you know, to the core structure of the idea, which is what we got kind of here. So like, like again, if I'm just taking, you know, column A and adding it with column B, I can start to really in my head without actually having to draw or, or lay much out, I could get a pretty firm idea of how I could make some of this work. And then of course there's other, um, contextual uh, contextual elements that just kind of add things in you know do I want to go with big windows you know do I want to show industrial supports kind of running through like we see over here uh, how dense do I want to add like air filtration systems uh, you know ventilations and, you know th very common things that are gonna go you know for like again the, the old kind of grungy kind of materials I thought this was great uh, again, this is more of like an upscaled one, right? Like it's it's very clean. Everything's very wide and spacious. Again, attributes of uh, areas that are, again, a little more higher end. Whereas you can see on the lower to kind of contrast this, things are a lot more cluttered. They're a lot more dense, right? Because there's not, you know, enough money in space to put everything. So that has to be a, a contributing factor in the design. So if your goal is design and, you know, a spacious, luxurious place, Make sure you have like those storage containers and enough space that are, you know you don't need to clutter that it looks really weird if you have a big big large space and you clutter it to the brim because that's usually not what happens but it makes more sense contextually right if you have a tinier space and it, everything is stacked whether it's optimally or not optimally that could be part of the narrative right that could be part of the storytelling that you're doing so again i'm just wrapping around here we're circling the middle i'm showing other and finding other great references i prefer pinterest uh to find a lot of these ideas what i love about an image uh like this is how raw and exposed everything is we know that there's concrete that there's wooden studs above the concrete that there's pipes grafted and hung 
these are all like observational notes I'm making it you know I, I literally jot down on my note sheet here as I'm going forward um, so I don't forget them and it, these are elements that can make it in the final design boxes of stuff again stacks of computers this is more genre specific for cyberpunk we want to see like older kind of tech um, that's what's part of the fun of it right but this is great stuff like this again additional kind of wiring and and very analog looking machine so nothing like in you know depending on the the way you want to go you could you could go very digital very digital screens with lots of but again i'd, I'd like to probably show that spectrum of things going old and analog into like newer and and fancier flatter and and more and kind of like energy based by um you know showing the different tiers of the classes of of the interior design so again it depends now, I just added a few other of these references in here that I thought were pretty good. I just saw them there as more of like genre pieces. This is like, again, very similarly to what we look to achieve. I always like to get like at least one point of reference that I thought is, is you know, decent enough. And I like this. It's not exactly a loft, but it's showing like I, it feels and, and that's what it, it feels cyberpunk to me. And that's what I'm looking at. And same with this. So I've got one for in camera, one for out. You know out of camera again a lot of similar attributes yeah uh, and to show you even though mine has a lot of similar or will have a, a lot of similar uh examples that we see here it's actually it's still a very different piece because there's a lot of overlap with with ideas when it comes to you know putting a, in a, a an interior space like this uh together so again this that would basically wrap up a lot of of phase two and that's just getting really good direct reference that is going to inform you to fill in basically gaps of your own knowledge and information uh, you know, entirely dependent on right two things what what your what your goal is and how you want to set up that in terms of like okay this is cyberpunk genre this is in, you know it's in Tokyo or you know maybe it's in North America and I want to do like either a layout or a a cinematic shot right these th these decisions compound and you might need like if i'm really bad at lighting but really good at layout for example right i would probably have an extra page of cinematic lighting reference a huge place um i like to go to for example on this if i'm not really sure how or how i want to uh, if i'm not sure how i want to light something you know it might be something kind of like like shot deck Right, like this is a great place if you haven't heard of it for coming up with lots of really cool cinematic based lighting and references. So, right, I'd, I'd have to compensate for my lack of knowledge of that if, I, if I'm not really good at doing this without reference and build an additional board that really has the lighting, you know, that I really want to sell. And as you can see, like they have a lot of great kind of shots, uh, tons, hundreds of movies, and you can pick by genre and Here's Blade Runner, right? And again, a cyberpunk image. So it gives it all, and they're really good rev, uh, resolution. And I can click on it, it gets huge. It's great. It's a great site, non-sponsored. But again, it's a tool that I often use at this phase, you know, when I need to, you know, basically kind of tap into that. So what, what phase two really boils down to is, you know, for me personally, of course, finding a good place to start. Here's an example of this. We, I was helping my student Mike develop his cyberpunk interior. So basically I kind of landed and I was, a, I was art directing the scene. So I was like, let's, I found this arch viz picture randomly like on interest on Pinterest. I was like, okay, oh, this is a good place to start. I love the relationship of materials. I love kind of like the vibe again for like that higher end office scene. It, it does a lot of things. It doesn't, you know, I want to do a lot with it, but again, I'm trying to find my place to start, my anchor point. It's a lot harder when you're building entirely from scratch, from ground nothing. And, and sometimes, you know, that's that's not a bad thing to do. But for this example, I this fit the bill so perfectly, I wanted to build from this. So what I did was provide, you know, I, I just kind of painted and sketched over this, you know, kind of made it more wide panel, stretched out the space, and began to basically feel it out here. And I thought this was really fun. I love the textures. I love the flow and the movement of it. Again, it, it has some of the things we need, right? Like a bar and a table, like a little bit of a lounge, 
but you know for me it didn't it still needs a lot of editing to make sense you know that i can utilize this so it's like you know i i would send you know and i send students i send clients whoever i'm working with right like these kind of notes where it's like okay let, let's move the table over there let's open this up get that right to the bar and, and then to come back you know with like a version of that and or <laughs> a version of that right where you have and let, let, let's put a planter there under you know with maybe like a rug somewhere not the, the planter on the rug that wouldn't make sense but let's just stick planter there let's stick table up here we could put like a fish tank or a movie area uh, you know depending like if it's got like a projector and it just shows corporate videos you know something something along those lines and you know we'll just start there and basically begin that next phase which i'll you know cover in a moment which would be like let's recreate and and, and block this out you know utilizing 3d so we're not just limited you know to this ugly mock-up i whipped up you know we can move the camera around we can optimize angle we could change lighting and you know basically build from a new and make even more changes but yeah like that's often how it can go uh see like here for example if i were to take a scene like often I'll just get three kind of similar reference pages and I, I might tell one of my guys look let's build a very rough simple block out based on these sort of spaces and then that will allow us to you know basically this is our place to start and that's largely what phase two is like finding enough reference I like to find my place to start and then I can move forward moving forward you know for me phase three that's often enough where I'm sorting ideas out uh, and I'm starting to do specific layout sketches, right? And that looks very different um, depending on the job, right? Like as you just saw, sometimes a sketch can be like literally a mock-up over an existing photo. Sometimes it can be chicken scratches. Sometimes it can be more of like just top-down floor plan right but here we are right in phase three and that's sketches and that these look these are sketches are personal i'm i'm not here to tell you how you sketch is wrong or how i'm sketching is the right way there's a lot of ways to sketch and it's a very personal process but generally i have a few ways to go about uh how i go about that i usually do this stage of sketches right which might look you know something like this where it's like okay i have a loft sort of space i'm gonna do as basically quick of a drawing as i can right i'm just gonna get like a general kind of feel of this and say like okay you know exit there's an exit or, or like a doorway here there's going to be like a, a kitchen area here i might do living area here and of course rec and eating so you know it's just starting with a really simple shape and kind of going from there oh what, what i miss i miss living or i miss bedding so like okay i'm gonna add that in like let's do again because it's a loft do like a, another little space right up here we'll stick the the bed and then i'll try to make sense of this really from a logical standpoint like i'm not i'm the big tip here is like just resist designing don't you know make something overly complicated unless you absolutely have to or unless that is the specific goal so you know like in this case i'll often just like, to make this more interesting you know i want to have like a slight elevation change you know so i'll bump the the floor up you know in the kitchen like okay let's raise it up right we're gonna have like a nice counter here right and you know that'll look you know kind of like that where would it make sense in a what would, where would the load be where you know, where where am i lo adding load bearing structural elements in this I, I might start to think very basically like that and then of course i'm observing this all at the same time with the reference okay we'll have like a, a beam there we'll have a beam down the middle or a big beam on the end so again like okay this is the center of the room if i were drawing this accurately i'll have one there there'll be one over here right one here and then they'll have like okay we'll have a cross beam um where does it make sense to have some of the smaller elements? Because, right, we, we move into spaces and we put our objects where it makes sense. So in my head, I'm like, okay, it makes sense to have a table here. You know, there'll be some chairs. Have a trash near it. So here's my trash. Um, you know, and then have, of course, like a little couch area right here with TV. Maybe there's like a ladder logistically. There had to be like a ladder or a stairway 
going up to there and here's like whatever is out in that space and of course you have wall shelves kitchen counter stuff see the space basically just designed itself i made a lot of decisions but like i wasn't working to make those it's just like what makes sense for this space right and of course this would just be wall and along the wall you have you know various windows and such but i i let the the design basically inform how the layout was going to be from like an optimization standpoint like would it make sense to have a, a bed necessarily right near yeah maybe it could work but i guess if i were in this space i'd try to like you know angle things up so you get like some designated spaces that are really good at you know a particular task or two um so my you know just to show you a few other sketches to come back to that, that thought where I said like there's two ways of approaching this and this is that first one where I call these internal sketches where they're either like me and my, my team will do them or we'll just do these for ourselves where we're just kind of planning and thinking. They're not, they're not ready for public eye. They're not for other people to really see and that would be the second type of sketching where I, where I call them client ready sketches. Where they where you basically hand them off and they'll be self-explanatory and good enough that they can sell whatever content they essentially have right so i'm, I'm, I'm most of the time the sketches just get wicked quick and loose like this if a client needs to see a, a, a particular sketch we'll just clean those up essentially maybe we'll add like a diagram like you kind of see here but they're gonna look cleaner a little bit better and the, you know, those are basically the two ways we go about kind of sketching out uh, our different ideas for this, right? So you could, some people prefer to entirely sketch in 3D where they just toss forms together and figure out a space visually like that. That's valid. Paint over photos, you can do the quick internal sketches. And then of course you could uh, tighten those up and have something more uh, client ready, right? So a bunch of different ways you can sketch, uh, you know, when coming, you know, with an idea like this. And then, uh, as you can see here, basically try to go right. The big takeaways here, just as a quick notes, you know, form follows function. It's the big one. And then resist designing at this stage, just get in what you need first. What is the, you know, and I, I call that the essentials. Basically, you know, what the what is it, <laughs> you know, the where, and like the how. That that part of the equation is really great to solve there. So we're not solving who yet, right? That's aesthetics. Like who is it for? That that, that adds a other, other layer of design there. We'll get back to that later. But these are the big three things that I like to figure out here in phase three. So, right, moving forward, that, that would lead us to phase three. Four. And I apologize for my writing today, folks. It would be here all day if I'm sitting here trying to draw or write <laughs> very cleanly phase four. I, I call it, for most lack of better words, like the 3D mock-up. You don't have to have a 3D, but I mean, it's basically the standard nowadays for, for most kind of designers and, and concept you know, visualizations. If you're doing something so stylized and like let's say wonky maybe i just being uh, using raw sketches is is most efficient but again feel it out there's not a be all end all this is just what i've been personally leaning toward most of the time and at this stage the big things i really want to take uh and figure out are are the forms and you know accurate a lot of accuracy accuracy with perspective Otherwise, you could sit there and draw perspective all day and scale and proportions. This is the, the big important things to figure out. So whether you're using 3D or not, you got to make sure that like, these are the big things in mind for most of the time. It, it, otherwise, I see it every term. Students are submitting work where there's like two objects next to each other, but one looks like it's for the giants and one object looks like it's for the dwarfs very different scales and sizes and it looks it's a big red flag it's like i'm a rook <laughs> i'm a novice at this i have no idea what i'm doing you got to keep scale important it's gonna it's gonna sell 
basically your authenticity or your believability with 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 the idea essentially um so again to show like a little bit of what these look like right if this is our our form and let's say our space 3d doesn't have to be complex right like it and in your drawing wouldn't have to be complex here's one example let's say of that right where again looking at that reference this is basically the equivalent of drawing and you could kind of see uh you know from blender back here this is where the horizon was and it's just drawing almost like a very minimal simple uh, box or cube like so right like we're just trying to figure out what this space is these little you know insets we kind we know like okay this is the scale of a like a window uh this cube right here represents a couch or a sofa right in all its glory this could be a sitting table this could be a person so right you could be the outmost of 3d generalists or, or or noobs when it comes to this and you can make it work just making cubes and moving them around this is kind of what i do um then i give it hand it off to other people to make it look good right to apply textures and lighting but like this is easy enough to draw right because the first thing you want to do is figure out your forms your scale which is what the person is for and of course your perspective for a particular shot so again great thing to solve at this this phase because let's say if you didn't want to continue this in 3d you could start dropping in photo textures to these you could start lighting it you know with like you know painting it you know like how would i do that all right well right, if i'm selecting like a box <laughs> like this and i'm starting from scratch i'm not going to make this a long demo or anything but like like if this is my space and then like this is like my floor how is the you not looking at my own grid but you know how is that floor lit is it lit kind of in the center like this would it be kind of like darker in the in the corner but this is how i did it for years you know it's just like let's set up this space and you know it's going to be based off that drawing did you know maybe it's going to be based off that layout and as you can see it doesn't take long to do so it's basically you by hand you recreate the block out phase in 3d i did it for years but now that the 3d just makes that all faster and accurate so i don't have to measure um so yeah, it's a good thing to do now if this were to be pushed you know like a little bit further again just to recreate again i like to recreate our base you know that we talked about in in phase two there uh, just to make something better you know that could look like let's just say this if we're replacing all the assets in that scene with something slightly better right like that's that's how this would look like this would be like the next step from what we just saw right right here it's like we're applying identity to the surfaces and and there's another big design technique here that goes that goes down uh, essentially and that's um you start introducing like at the later half of phase four and this is technically phase five stuff but you know subdivision and materials are a great way a great thing to introduce at this at this stage you know shout outs to my boy isaiah who whipped up this mock-up for us he did a great job and he's super fast um but right we can see like okay like there's a division of space essentially right like right here and right here we're breaking down these by materials like this is glass versus wall this wall is slightly different than this and right it's it's just a great way to start to make something look a little more visually interesting without going too far and then we can really add aesthetics and stuff which i can't show today unfortunately the the work itself is you know locked under nda for now but, you know, essentially we, what we did is kind of just added a, a huge kind of Japanese influence in terms of the aesthetics. We added timber architecture, you know, into there. We added some nice fancy, you know, lanterns and, and paneling and it, and it came out really nice. But essentially, right, in terms of process, right, we, we basically, you know, engineered like, okay, this is a good place to start. This is really similar conceptually and spatially to what we need. Now let's start to, over time, over this process change that into the concept you know we need and basically start to push that um 
forward, you know, as much as we can. Now, the other way of doing like a 3D block out, um, like if you're doing all the way 3D, like this is kind of what it can look like. This is the one for the loft that I was sketching out here, right? It's quite dense, it's quite full. And honestly, like, like my big tips and, and takeaways for this is model the essentials, right? Which is your structural stuff. Get that all in there. And if it's for like clutter, there's a lot of great clutter out there that you can download. They, like Kitbash has 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 clutter. Lots of 3D objects like on on Turbo Squid and uh, the ArtStation Market Store. There's lots of objects there. Uh, you can get really affordable sets of objects, whether it's kitchenware, clutter, um, houseware. Like you can fill a scene pretty quickly without. Let's say if you don't want to model everything yourself, but that is always an option. Um, but you can see, yeah, it, it got pretty dense pretty fast without without kind of overdoing it. And the 3D itself provides a nice, you know, sort of shading um, aesthetic. And like this, something like this could be taken to a finish. You could, you know, you, I know a lot of students or a lot of styles are just a matter of like, let's just do a super tight drawing over this and we'll add in all the little pieces at this stage that aren't there. And you, right, like, and you make this the final and you just use what's here as part of like that minimal kind of shading. That could like absolutely work. Um, and you, you can even overlay color to that. And we had some great submissions over on the, the Patreon Discord when we were doing our uh, challenge with that. And you can kind of see this awesome one here. Sorry, the name didn't uh, come with it. But yeah, this is basically that process. This is a great little interior design, I feel. It's just really appropriately cluttered. It's, it's a kind of like a commercial but underground kind of space, like obviously some kind of arms dealer. And it has that cyberpunk vibe. We've got the metallic limbs and the cybernetic eyes. And of course the cola machines, the vendors, like everything's been planned and thought out and of course executed really here. Uh, so again, sh you know, shout out to the patrons that are contributing to these challenges and, and getting their work out there like this. This is just great. Again, follow the process and nailed the landing really good stuff it's not rendered out like again in a cinematic way but we get this nice little cutaway right into like this little world and it shows an understanding you know of all of that but yeah like what basically once once phase four is done like the last phase would be that set dressing stuff and like the basically that clutter and like the personal the personal aesthetic phase five this is where you can introduce themes like i was talking with that other example here like we went with like a more japanese timber theme and mix that with technology it was like a great contrast but you can do uh personal uh you know aesthetics so like again the who who is it for and and, and why do they do that are they a slob they use it as a place of work um, you know, are they a homemaker? You know, what, what, who's the who? Who is it for? Because that who will dictate a lot um, aesthetics. A lot of what goes into there. How clean something is. How dirty something is. Are they a, a collector? Are they rich? Are they poor? What are they? What kind of art are they into? Right? So it can go back and forth. And it's a great way to, to layer on another aspect of design. So coming back to um, Mike's example here that I was working with him on, right? Like this is like, okay, but you know, w one thing we did find that is, you know, that it needed uh, in, you know, in a case like this was, it needs like a real good visual hook. And I always like to put one visual hook on, on a design like this, cause you know, yeah, more than that, it gets too busy. Uh, so we put in like a nice tree, you know, and we did went, we went slightly, um, you know, into like the Japanese culture with like some of the lanterns because again it gives it flavor I like giving things flavor with my design we kept like the nice panels there and of course we went with the color scheme but you know like things take time and iteration we looked at this we whipped it up you know so quick it's like the lights are out of control right we have like way too many LEDs um it, it looks very futuristic very cool but like it kind of misses that a little bit of that mark and of course everything is overly red at this point it it flattens the entire design out you know so what we ended up having to do is you know scale a lot of that back change up the materials a little bit get rid of a lot you know of that lighting we you know to balance out some of the light and uh density of information over here we added like a nice little holographic dragon over there again to play into the theme and add a little visual weight 
and we move the bar over to there again replace that with the tree so we get like these nice three points of entry and it definitely feels like a little more corporate now with some of these materials you know that we got in here and, and from here like it still had its issues you know it's still kind of suffering from the uh it's too red we we lose what's outside the windows quite a bit so it, it needed like that extra layer of balance and, and art direction luckily we you know we had, we had a meeting we sat down and we started to resolve a lot of that it's getting a little better we have a light on here we we tried you know again like that orangey kind of glow outside it was a bit too much so we simply just decided to introduce some cool colors to balance this out and that seemed to pretty much solve it here's the final but at least this way we can see it um by comparison right see it's just a lot more balanced it just made sense to kind of go with like a a more like kind of day shot and then we even changed uh, you know the leaves to yellow it just it kind of harmonized really nicely and then of course we got the, the coolness of um you know some of the uh the interior there but yeah that that's just like the general lifespan you know of an, of, a, of an idea it can evolve it can change uh, you can add a lot of personality and character to things at the end like um my student en here did the uh did another little office and she wanted to do like a japanese theme with that and you could kind of see like how she executed that it's again mixing old and and, and and new and adding you know more artistic things that you know don't necessarily need to be there but they give it a little bit more flavor like having a have a bonsai behind the the master's desk having the the boardroom you know kind of table with the mats and you know from the lighting and the textures yeah i think she did a pretty good job at that so yeah there's a lot of great w and and fun ways you know to kind of work at this stuff and again most students simply just don't set up restrictions for themselves and it's really hard to measure whether something's working or not so simply just sit down with a design goal think of a place that you want to you know concept out give it a purpose um, and follow that process and you'll find you'll get a lot better results but uh, let me know if you liked what, what you saw if you like this kind of format more than like quicker ones always trying to figure out the best way to deliver you guys content and of course links for everything um, is below. I'll catch you next time.